Buckle up. Complete highlights from the 2016 Big Ten Football Championship game at Lucas Oil Stadium. Trace McSorley would have himself a day. No quarterback debate here. Alex Hornerbrook would not play. Bart Houston would get the start. Saquon Barkley, Corey Clement, two of the nation's best running backs. Under four minutes to play in the first. Clement finds a seam on the left edge, and he is gone. 67 yards, third longest rushing touchdown of his career. How about the wide receiver blocking 70 yards downfield? Wisconsin up 14-0. Clement finished with 164 yards on the ground. Penn State would respond. Jay, I'll tell you who does not get enough credit in this Penn State offense, and that's tight end Mike Kosicki. Hands for a big man. Go up and get a big fella. 33-yard touchdown grab from McSorley. Watch it again. Perfectly thrown. Just enough of a push to get the separation. And Penn State is within a touchdown, down 14-7. Same score to the second quarter we go. Mistake number one by Penn State. Brian Gaia snaps this one over McSorley's head. McSorley unable to jump on it, ends up in the waiting arms of Ryan Connolly, who goes the other way for Wisconsin's third defensive touchdown of the year. Gaia knows it was a huge mistake, and the Badgers go up 21-7. Ensuing Penn State possession on fourth and two. Penn State going for it on their side of the 50, and McSorley throws it away. Questionable call, Mace. Yeah, a questionable call, but at the... Uh... You know, I wouldn't have gone for it right there. I thought he was with desperation. It would turn into a Wisconsin touchdown. Dare Ogunbowale's fourth rushing score of the year. And the Badgers are up 28-7. We looked at each other in the green room wondering, is that curtains? <laughs> Penn State would say no. Huge score before the half. Again, going for it at, on fourth and two. Doesn't work. T.J. Watt strips McSorley, hits him hard. Now, the good news here after the Watt recovery is that McSorley would not be injured as badly as it looked. And the Penn State defense holds Wisconsin three and out. Then McSorley finds Saeed Blacknall overplayed. Leon Figaro makes the mistake and Blacknall goes 40 yards. Penn State with that touchdown, now down two scores at the half. To the third quarter, Wisconsin missed field goal, sets up Penn State and on the first play, they go for the big one, and it's McSorley to Blacknall again. 70 yards as two Wisconsin defenders cancel each other out, and Penn State suddenly within seven. Blacknall had six grabs for 155 yards and two touchdowns. Wisconsin trying to answer right back instead. Brandon Bell with the great play. Was that a little LeVar Arrington-esque, Mr. Lehman? Same number and everything. The Lion Leap. Wisconsin would recover, but Penn State has the momentum, and Say, 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 hey. Saquon Barkley in for the score. The ref cam shows us he crossed the plane. Play was reviewed. Call stands. We are tied at 28. Wisconsin will get a field goal. Their only points of the second half to make it 31-28. And again, we're going yard. McSorley to Deshaun Hamilton. Hamilton had himself a day. Very quietly over 100 yards. He finished with eight grabs for a buck 18. Penn State rolling. Heading into the fourth quarter. Let's try it again. How good is that? Saquon Barth. What a bomb, though, Mimic Sorley. Right in the breadbasket. Cannot throw it any better. Penn State's first lead of the game up 35-31. A field goal makes it 38-31. Corey Clement refusing to go quietly into that good night. Unbelievable grab. He goes, bobbles the ball, and makes the catch. Three plays later, after a Wisconsin timeout, Gus Johnson, take it away. Clement. Did he get it? No! He didn't get it! What a stop! One for the ages! On fourth and one, Clement stood up. Grant Haley, the initial hit. Why does that name sound familiar? He may have been the guy that turned the season around the block on the Ohio State field goal attempt and then the return for the touchdown. Penn State using that win, the momentum that has been built up over the past 10 weeks, and an unbelievable Big Ten championship game performance by McSorley, Barkley, Gasicki, all the receivers, the entire coaching staff, and don't forget about what that defense did in the second half.
McSorley's 384 yards, not just a career high, but also a Big Ten championship game record. Barkley was banged up. He goes for over 102 touchdowns as Penn State does what no one thought possible, a 38-31 win over Wisconsin in the 2016 Big Ten Championship. Back to Indianapolis we go. Mike Hall with Penn State head coach James Franklin. James, 21 unanswered points changed the ball game. What was different? We don't like first halves. We haven't liked them all year <laughs> long. But our kids don't panic. I don't like it in the first half, but it does allow me to go in at halftime and say we're a second half team. I think we've been averaging 27 points in the second half and giving up six. So I told him that. So uh, we were confident coming out of halftime. That being said, Trace McSorley was a different person in the second half. How come? It, it came down to up front. I've been saying it for three years. We strained up front. We gave them time. And our receivers made plays for them. What was different defensively in the third and fourth quarters? Same thing. We were getting beat up front in the first half. Their O-line was dominating our D-line. Uh, same thing, our O-line was struggling with their D-line. We were able to get the guys settled down. Obviously, we were able to make some plays. It was huge for our guys. I'm very, very proud of them. You guys were 2-2 two and two at one point this year. Let's not talk about you that. You won what, what, nine what, what, straight. Yeah, let's talk about the nine straight. What's been different? Family. Family. We believe in ourselves. We had a young team. We started to have some success, and we build on it. But let's talk about Stop talking about the 2-2. Two and two. Talk about the nine games in a row. What message did your team send to the playoff committee tonight? I don't know about all that. I'm just, I'm very happy that our guys played well tonight. Uh, obviously, I make the argument that we play in the best conference in college football. You look at our record the last, the second half of the season, they say you're allowed to get better as the season goes on. You can make up for early mistakes. We've done that. Your call, committee.